Welcome to the best of high school sports in Northern California. We are the B Prep Show. And we come to you from a small school powerhouse in Roseville Valley Christian Academy, and we're standing on a unique NBA floor. Welcome back for another edition of the Bee Prep Show. I'm Mike Finnerty, joined as always by my co-host Joe Davidson of the Sacramento Bee. And as we had mentioned, we are coming to you from Valley Christian Academy in Roseville. And Joe, uh, something unique about this floor. Yeah, we're going to touch on basketball a little bit in this show, but a lot of volleyball, a lot of football for sure. But, you know, it's dry in here. It's wet outside, but this is a unique old basketball floor. Valley Christian Academy got this floor from the Golden State Warriors which used this this floor back in the 1960s. And so this very floor, Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, Rick Barry, Elgin Baylor, Jerry West, they ran this floor. You and I ran this floor before this <laughs> taping, and we had to stretch for a little bit, so we're, uh, we're out of shape, but kind of neat as we touch on basketball and connect it all together. Yeah, and a small school power here. The girls' basketball team won a section title for the first time. The baseball team has won six titles in the last seven years, four in a row in Division Seven. so they got something going on, led by their man, the beard, the guy who runs this joint, Brad Gunter Jr. But right now we're going to talk some football and Joe, a big time performance in Merced, but it was a guy from Monterey Trail. Oh yeah, Monterey Trail running back Trey Nahas. We've talked about him, we've seen him, we've reported on him. He's a terrific scholar, incredible running back, 2,500 yards for the season after he had 407 yards, a section playoff record at Merced with five touchdowns, 51-45 victory, 407 yards, a sack Joaquin section playoff record. We believe it's the third most in regional history all time. Trey Nahas is a man. We've seen him chug down the tracks. He's still alive. He takes on Folsom, number one ranked Folsom. He's looking forward to that game. The Bulldogs are looking forward to that game. You got to stop him. But he, you know, kudos to him as we celebrate him. Last week we talked about Marcel Brown, a real in a big game. Trey Nahas touch that a little bit too, so very impressive. Yeah, very impressive. And later on the show, we're going to bring you our Fox 40 final quarter highlights, and we'll big picture some teams who are still left playing in these playoffs. We're going to preview next week's games, so don't go away, but we're going to get right into volleyball, girls volleyball section championships, and we're going to start off with our Les Schwab game of the week, and it has the number one El Camino Eagles taking on the number two Christian Brothers Falcons. It's the Division Three Championship. We take you to the pavilion on the campus of UC Davis for the Sac Joaquin Section Championships. And we'll start with the Division Three match that had the El Camino Eagles taking on the Christian Brothers Falcons with the Falcons coming in as the defending champion. El Camino swept Christian Brothers in both regular season meetings this year, but things would be different this time around. Falcons took the first set, so to the second set we go. El Camino turned things around. Mackenzie Reeder Esparza here puts the Eagles up by six. And that would eventually lead to this Libby Dahlberg block the net to seal the second set 25-18. Third set, more El Camino. Michaela Nachetti finds the left side for a five-point advantage. And El Camino would take this set as well, 25-19, to go up 2-1 in the match. Christian Brothers would prevail in the fourth to force a fifth and deciding set. So here we go, match on the line, first one to 15. Dahlberg with the stuff at the net puts El Camino up 14 to 10. And then moments later, it's Dahlberg one more time. She puts the finishing touches on a 15 to 12 win. And the Eagles take the match three to two and capture their fourth section championship and their third in the last four years. The win improves El Camino to 47 to three on the season. And now both teams will get ready for NorCal playoffs this week. But after we caught up with the victorious Eagles. I'm so proud of this team. I mean, I didn't want it to go to five, but I think that showing how we fought back in that fifth game really shows what we're made of, so. It was a tough one, it was well fought. I kind of had a tough feeling about this one. I just felt like maybe after we're so used to winning and especially after the five game, uh, game on Tuesday, I was just kind of came in here a little nervous and I was just hoping that we could really pull through and it was back and forth. We thought we had it, we didn't have it, we had it, we didn't have it. And I'm just really glad that it finally worked in our favor. Everything else will be icing on the cake. This was a great way to finish and making it interesting with the fifth game. That was definitely a fun game because we came off from going for Benicia in the tight fifth game and then we just love that pressure and it was 
like that was fun volleyball. We haven't had that in a while, so it was good to see. I told our kids, um, just getting to this point right here, is we need to really work on appreciating it. We've been a little spoiled the last few years because we've been very successful. What I, what I told them is, I won my first one back in 1996. I didn't see another one for 13 years. So it's very hard to get here. It's very hard to maintain a high level of play. I told them just make sure you appreciate every part of it. Next up is the Division II game, a rematch of last year's championship where the vintage crushers of Napa were looking to do what they couldn't do a year ago, which is beat the Rockland Thunder, a team looking for its fourth section championship in third in the last five years. We'll start it off with the opening set and vintage was red hot going up 17-11 on this ace. And that's how things would go for the balance of the set with vintage taking it 25-18. After that, Rockland made some adjustments and the balance of power switched back to the defending champion Thunder. Rockland junior Julianne Miller with the kill here to finish off game two, 25-23. That's gonna even the match at one apiece. Third set now, look at Abby Marjima. Vintage with no answers for the powerful delivery of this freshman who had one big hit after another. Morgan Farrell gets it done here at the net as Rockland gets it 25 to 18 and now leads the match at 2-1. With the Thunder up 23-20 in the fourth set, Farrell with a nice touch here puts Rockland one point from victory. Then moments later, Rockland slams the door shut behind Miller's big hit. And that'll do it as Rockland prevails 25-22, takes the match 3-1, and now the team, just one senior, this year makes it back-to-back -back section championships for the first time. Rockland improves to 28-13 on the season before getting ready for NorCal's this week. For head coach Dave Muscarella, it's his third title with Rockland, and after the match, we caught up with Muscarella as well as with some of his players, but first up, it's coach. I mean, to be honest, I thought we had a chance. I didn't know we were going to gel the way we are now. We're really starting to play pretty good. I feel good about it. Um, we do have a senior, and she played a large role. Sierra was awesome tonight, uh, and she has been for the last couple of games. So, you know, we're going to miss her next year, but, God, I like what's coming back. I think that we, we came out strong, and I think we, we we're able to show what we do in practice, and I'm really happy and I'm really proud of our girls that we that we practice hard in the gym and that we're able to show it on the court. It's definitely a younger team. Like, this is our rebuilding year. We did lose a lot of seniors last year, but I thought that this team is has the ability to win a lot of games, and we have the... Um, physicality to win and I thought these girls came out and they balled out like they are a younger team and we were we did start off slow in the beginning but I thought these girls did know what they needed to do to get it to win and I thought that um, we had the momentum in the second game and the third game and we just balled out the third the fourth game and we didn't we like we won and then we didn't even know and we were just like so exciting and it's just an awesome feeling for these girls that are, that are just so young to experience this especially our freshmen and our two sophomores it's just it's just an awesome feeling especially winning twice and I think we played really well together and like we knew what we needed to do to win and we figured out what they were doing and we just played to our strengths and their weaknesses and we pulled through in the end. We'll wrap up our highlights with the Division I game that featured the Brackets number one seed, the Pittman Pride of Turlock, taking on the number two seed, the Pleasant Grove Eagles of Elk Grove. With Pittman up 1-0 in the match, Pleasant Grove went to work. Kayla Williams gets the block here and that would spark a nice run that would lead to the Eagles taking the second set 25-22, but Pleasant Grove wasn't done. The Eagles prevailed in the third set as well, this time at 25-23, to go up 2-1 in the match. Pittman came back and took the fourth set, setting up a decisive fifth set, and the Pride get it done, 15-12, and take the Division I section championship. All right, Mike, great stuff there. Terrific volleyball all season long. These teams are all going to the NorCal playoffs. Section champions get the benefit of having more home games, but we'll see these teams again here in the coming weeks. Great crowds, great student support. Sometimes the football crowds have thinned out because the tickets are too pricey for some of the students. It's not been a problem for the volleyball championship, but some of the games got over pretty late. Past your curfew, past my bedtime at midnight almost. Yeah, they did get over late, and you know, in talking to one administrator with one of the schools still left playing, he says, hey, this is going to impact us because we have to have our buses back to the yard by 1230 or we're double charged. So that's kind of when you talk about games going late, that's how it can directly impact the school. And, you know, it may sound like it's nitpicking a whole big deal. Well, these schools don't swim in cash. And so a double charge for a busing because of a late game, 
one of those things. Yep. Interesting topic. Yep. All right. We got a whole lot more left in this show. Joe, as we mentioned, we're going to bring you our Fox 40 final quarter football highlights. We're going to big picture some of the teams still left playing. We're going to preview next week's games. We're also going to introduce you to an outstanding Rockland girls volleyball player. We got a chance to see her in the championship game. So we got a whole lot more. Stick around. This is your RAM Auto Update. Just in, the classic term used car is old-fashioned, outdated, and no longer of any particular relevance. Let's party. The Roseville Auto Mall is throwing a massive factory certified pre-owned sales event. That means incredible savings on just about every kind of car in the world. All factory certified. It's happening now. It's going fast. In layman terms, skedaddle. The Roseville Auto Mall driven to be the best. We want to thank our title sponsor, Save Mart Supermarkets. Shop Save Mart up and down the Central Valley. We got loads of football on this show. We're going to start off with our Fox 40 final quarter highlights. We're going to big picture some teams, some games, and let's get it going. And let's start off with those Pacers. The Grant Pacers looking the part of Sac Joaquin Section Division II heavyweight favorites. You got a good crowd. You got that great atmosphere on Del Paso Heights. Taking on Downey and Modesto. Roll to a big win. The Grand Pacers did. Donovan Brown, love this guy's spirit, love his effort. Five touchdowns in this game, three to Arion Huff, taking on Vacaville next. So this is a team that has not been unbeaten this far since 2010. The Pacers looking the part. Well, mentioning uh, Vacaville, let's get right into it. Uh, they took on the Delaware Golden Eagles, and what a great game. And I know one thing, there was a big-time defensive stop in that, in that yeah, matchup. That's exactly right. First time these two powerhouse programs have ever played in the playoffs because they've been in different divisions for so long. So Vacaville, known for its wing tee and all kinds of running back speed, deception, toughness, and outlasted Del Oro with a goal line stand late to win it 35-28. So Vacaville dethrones the defending champions. This is a tough team, excellent team, overcoming a player death from earlier this year. So they've had to deal with real life. And the Bulldogs are the last team to beat Folsom, by the way, in sack working section play in the 2011 playoffs. So Bulldogs are getting ready to take on some Pacers. Yeah. All right, let's keep this going. Let's talk about the Granite Bay Grizzlies. You know, it's a team that questioned a lot of positions they had when the season started and if they would be that good and who would be the quarterback. Well, they're playing very well, and they took care of Napa. Yeah, they really did and, and won that game handily. Napa, which beat Vacaville earlier this year. And Granite Bay runs the, the fly, but also has good quarterback play in Justin Yeaton. And also using Cameron Smith now as a tight end, as a blocker. I don't know if that's fair because he's so <laughs> bullish. And as Coach Ernie Cooper had told you, Mike, he goes, we're going to use uh, big Cameron Smith. He caught a touchdown pass. Miles Burris, the Oakland Raiders linebacker who went to Granite Bay, was in that game. Or was, wasn't in the game. That would be a violation. <laughs> but he was on hand to watch, and he loves Cameron Smith yeah. and the and the. And Granite Bay said defense still wins championships. You, you so bet, neat to see. You bet it does. All right, Joe, the area's top team, the Folsom Bulldogs, they just keep it going. They had no problem with the Franklin Wildcats, a very good Franklin team. So that just shows you how good they are. Oh, yeah. It was 42 nothing at the half. 56-14 was the win total in Section Division One play. That is 10 consecutive playoff wins in section play for Folsom. Jake Brown. He looks left, he looks right, he fires over the middle. He could do all kinds of things. Six more touchdowns. He has 70 for the season. He had 75 last year. He's got 200-something for his career. So the Bulldogs loaded, taking on Trey Nahas and Monterey Trail. Folsom, remember, has a terrific defense as well. I do remember that. It's hard not to forget. All right, Joe, let's keep this going. We're still rolling down this track. We've got Rockland taking on St. Mary's of Stockton. St. Mary's coming up big. St. Mary's came up very big, rolled in this win in a section Division II game to set up a showdown at Elk Grove. That's going to be a lot of fun in Division II. Noah Rigetti, five touchdowns last week. He has four again this week. He's a very impressive quarterback. That is a big win over an excellent Rockland team. We know how good Rockland is defensively. So the Rams in Stockton are the powerhouse team of the 209. We are going to wrap it up with Division 5, the Bear River Bruins rolling right along. This team is playing very well. They're going to take on their longtime rival, the Colfax Falcons, but to get there, they had to beat Houston. Yeah, and playing the part of a number one seed in Division 5, Bear River, the Bruins up there by Grass Valley, voters. They got voters on this team. Uh, and so whether it's quarterback or running back, and they play tough, they like to play in the mud, but this is an excellent team. Back in the finals for the first time in 20 seasons, Scott Savoy, the longtime coach, his co-coach, one of our all-time favorites and Terry Logue, they're ready for another championship. Yeah, well, that's going to wrap it up for uh, our Fox 40 final quarter highlights. I'd like to thank our friends there. 
but we're only halfway through this show. Joe, as we mentioned, more football. We're going to preview this Friday's playoff games, championship games, some there in the Division 5 and Division 6. We're going to introduce you to an outstanding volleyball player at Rockland High School. Stick around. we got plenty more. There's a history you feel when you visit any of the Von Hausen automotive dealerships. You'll sense the quality of Mercedes-Benz, and you'll experience the low-pressure atmosphere that comes from two generations of family ownership. Mercedes-Benz of Sacramento, Mercedes-Benz of Eldorado Hills, and Mercedes-Benz of Rockland. Three great reasons to drive one of the world's best automobiles. Come feel the difference or visit VonHausen.com. Sponsors starting with Save Mart Supermarkets, where fresh comes first. Shop at Save Mart up and down the Central Valley. Schools Financial Credit Union, banking for everyone, value, convenience, and emerging technology. Von Housen Automotive Group celebrating 50 years with Mercedes-Benz. Stop dreaming and start driving. Roseville Auto Mall. If you're looking for a used car, go to the Roseville Auto Mall with over 6,000 vehicles to choose from. And Les Schwab Tires. Since 1952, we promise we'll get you more for your money. Welcome back to the very best of high school sports in Northern California. Big emphasis in the Sac Joaquin section. We are the B Prep Show. Mike, a lot of football in the earlier segments. More football coming up. Some of the games to look for this week. But first, a little bit more on volleyball. The Northern California Regionals are this week. We've got some teams that have a chance to continue to win. And you got to catch up to one of the dominant players in all of Northern California, and she's only a junior. Yep, we're going to introduce you to her now as part of our school's financial credit union game on Athlete of the Week, the tall and talented Maddie Haynes of Rockland. With Rockland's win over Vintage for the Division II section championship last week, it was the second section title in three years for Rockland's six foot four junior outside hitter, Maddie Haynes, perhaps the best player in our area. While Haynes has it all going for her, two time champion, member of USA Volleyball's youth national team, and a national college recruit, Haynes has shown significant growth as a player over the past two years. I used to be such a perfectionist and I knew that that wasn't going to get me so far in volleyball. Like, yeah, it's awesome being perfect, but I know a good player isn't going to get every ball or they are going to make the same mistakes. Olympians are making the same mistakes I am and I needed to understand that. Um, what, I've always been playing up with older girls, like playing with the best, like playing with the best to be the best. And I feel like that's like helping me a lot more and knowing that I need to not get so frustrated with myself is that what that's what he's talking about. And so I've been like working on Sundays, every Sunday with Addie Hochschild with my passing to get a better passer. And I've talked to my coach, Debbie Kohlberg, and just my mentality has become a lot better, like just shaking it off the next point, knowing that I'm a good enough player that I can get the next ball. And then I need to have the mentality, like they served at me, I missed it, served at me again, and I'll pass it. Like, I, I, I feel like I've gotten a lot better about that this year. Haynes will have her choice of colleges when she graduates in 2016, but she's already given a verbal commitment to Cal and there was a lot she liked about the Bears. What I love about Cal is the coaches. They just want to work with you. They want you to get better. They, I, I always check in with them. They're such a good family and they're such good coaches. And I feel like the program's really good. This is a rebuilding year. And um, I'm super excited to go in and go help them win some more titles. Um, I don't, I'm just super pumped. I'm a little nervous, but I know, I know some of the girls. And I'm just so excited to get in there and just start playing. Um, but I need to get what I need to get done here, and then I'm going to go over there. Haynes isn't the only athlete in her family. Her father played football for Cordova High School in the mid-1980s, and Haynes' sister Lexi was a volleyball star at Rockland as well. Oh, yes, athletics are. My dad is super tall. That's obviously where I get my high from. Um, my sister is now at Sac State rowing, and that's awesome for her. I'm so happy for her. I did get the chance to play volleyball with her here. And that when I leave high school, I want to leave a name for my family, not only me, but my family. I do have two younger brothers who are going to come into this high school, and I want them to come in knowing, like, wow, my sister left a mark at this school. She, she got those two banners on the wall. She, she was an awesome volleyball player, and I want them to come in, like, knowing, like, what they want to do and, like, lead for our family as well. So with everything that she has on her plate, we asked Haynes how she's been able to balance athletics, academics, and life in general. I've been on that with my mom a lot. She helps me so much to organize my academics, my school, my club volleyball and everything. I just write it all down in an agenda. At first, my freshman year was a little stressful because I was trying to be a varsity. I was trying to be a top player in the country. I was trying to get on a top volleyball team. And now that I, I'm an older player, I matured more, my mentality is a lot better. I, um, 
what is it? I just become a lot better as my organization with my volleyball and academics as well. All right, Mike, good stuff there. The Cal Bears are getting a terrific player, and she's got so much spirit. And she's a happy kid, and she's a dominating force in volleyball. And Rockland Thunder looking for a NorCal championship. And she has just won her second section championship in, uh, in, in th her three years there. All right, Joe, a couple weeks ago, I was out for Letter of Intent signing ceremony times. Always good to catch up with them. We showed you some of the interviews in last week's show. We've got more for you this week. Today's a big day. All these athletes are signing. You know, it's a lot of stress relief, sign the big paper, but uh, overall it's, it's a good day today. The coaches and the team really, they're very welcoming and they're all super inclusive and the coaches are awesome. They make me laugh. They're, you know, very welcoming and they're willing to take me in as a player, which is awesome. And then the, the team is just really, they all have like a really good sense of humor and they're very, you know, social and it's, I really enjoy that whole aspect of it. Just a lot of excitement, like I'm like at like a loss for words because I've been waiting for this for so long. Like this is something that like you only dream, dream about as like a little kid and it's like finally happening. I'm just so excited and it's finally here. I've been waiting for this since I committed to UCLA and it's just like a weight lifted off my shoulders. It's pretty surreal. Uh, you know, I've, that's something that, that I've been dreaming about, you know, my whole life. And, uh, you know, I've been playing baseball since I was a little kid and playing other sports as well. And I've always wanted to be a collegiate athlete. That's always been my number one goal. And, and now that's finally here, it's, it's really surreal. And, and I'm just trying to enjoy it as much as I can. All right, Mike, letter of intent is always a big deal for all sports. And the football letter of intent is coming up in February. We'll be all over that one as well. Yep, those are always fun to go to. All right, one more segment left in this show. We're going to preview football playoffs. we got championships this weekend. we got a whole lot more. But before we go to break, we've got more letter of intent signing ceremony interviews. I wanted to play for the best team that I could. Oregon, the coaches are great. The school is great. I love the atmosphere. It's awesome. I just feel like I have to be more of a leader and a role model for my team, and I have to do things that I want others to do, and I have to lead by example for us to be successful. I'm super excited. Um, I've always, a lot of my family's gone to Davis, so they're also really excited, and I think it's going to be a good fit for me just all around. It was really overwhelming, like when I was signing I was getting a little shaky, it was kind of nerve wracking. I mean, there's a big crowd here and it's like, I'm still taking it all in. It's just, so, it went by so fast. It's just sad to be gone, but it's, it's going to be a new journey. I'm happy to commit and running for a school like NAU is just kind of like a dream come true. <laughs> there have been multiple times I thought I wasn't good enough and I think this is like my way of proof of showing to myself that I really am. And I'm excited and I can't wait to go and experience it. A credit union is a not-for-profit member-owned financial institution. Can your bank say that? Demand more from your financial institution. Make the switch to Schools Financial Credit Union for low loan rates, state-of-the-art technology, making accounts accessible anytime, anywhere, and more ATMs than most major banks. Anyone who lives, works, or worships in Sacramento and its surrounding counties is eligible to join. Be part of the credit union difference and bank happily ever after with Schools. We want to thank our title sponsor, Save Mart Supermarkets. Shop Save Mart up and down the Central Valley. We've got football to talk about. We're going to preview some of uh, this weekend's games. We've got some championship games to get right into it. Let's start off with the Division 5 section championship. You've got Colfax taking on Bear River. He talked a little bit about this already. PBL showdown for the title. Pioneer Valley League bragging rights right here. I think this is excellent. The Sackville King section selection committee did it right. These are the top two seats. Here they are in the finals. Good sportsmen, good coaches, and it's both 
run the ball. Uh, Tim Rollins runs with power and fury for Colfax. You got the Voter Brothers at quarterback and running back for Bear River. Bear River last won a section championship 20 years ago. Colfax has won several. This is a great game. Good showdown. Yep. All right. The Division Six championship game. It's a rematch of a game that took place this year already. Capital Christian of Sacramento going up against Modesto Christian. Capital Christian won, I believe, by a point, and uh, I think they want that championship. They really do. And Coach Phil Grahams has got a dynamite player in Justice Shelton Mosley. I'm not sure what he can't do. Can he play nose guard? I'm not sure, but he he could score on interceptions, punt returns, kickoff returns, handoffs, probably through throw the ball. Capital Christian will go to Justice Shelton Mosley quite a bit. Yep. All right, let's get over to some other divisions. Uh, Division one, you've got Monterey Trail going up against Folsom. We've talked about them already in this show. It, it, you know, you'd say, yeah, it should be a Folsom win, but Monterey Trail's not going to make it easy. You know, and here's the, here's the X factor for Monterey Trail is EJ Crucis, the quarterback, and he can throw a nice deep ball to help balance the running game of Trey Nahas, who will carry it 40 times if they need to. Folsom, we know Folsom is led by quarterback Jake Browning. He's got 200 plus touchdown, but Folsom runs the ball with Brian Weldy, and Green and Bailey Lealagi, they can run with power to also balance teams out. So this is not just a pass only team and they also play superb defense, the Folsom Bulldogs. Yeah, and we'll stay in Division One. Uh, you've got Granite Bay taking on Tracy. I think everyone thought it'd be Granite Bay Jesuit. It's not. Granite Bay could get back to a championship, but Tracy's no pushover. Tracy is fast and athletic and had the big win um, last Saturday against Jesuits, so that shows you that's a factor there. Granite Bay gets another home game, and that's for the uh, the, the fly sweep and Coach Ernie Cooper, who who, who never gets animated enough in the yeah. playoffs. But uh, great running game with Ben Smith and Cameron Smith playing linebacker and a little tight end. Is that fair? I mean, he just roughs people up. That's a terrific talent. All right, Joe, and one more left. We got Elk Grove hosting St. Mary's in Division Two. Uh, this is going to be an interesting game. St. Mary's had the nice one over Rockland. Elk Grove's playing well. What do you think? Elk Grove has great running backs. El Toro Allen. Manny Scotty Anderson and Spencer Chef, and they have to run like the wind as they have already because St. Mary's will throw the ball with Noah Reggetti, and Elk Grove gave up a lot of yards passing to Will C. Wood in that playoff game last week. 400 yards pass, can't have that. Got to get pressure or just run like mad with those running backs. <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't talk much about Division Three. We'll get more to those next week, but before you know, we're going to be at semifinals, championship games. Playoffs, they're fun, and the it's championships a, are just around the corner. It's a great section for small yeah. school, medium school, large schools, and some of these teams are talking NorCal and State Bowl, and that's okay because they're, they're that good. That's right. All right, Joe, we're going to honor two athletes as we do every week. We've got our Von Housen Stars of the Week. This week's Von Housen Stars of the Week are Libby Dahlberg of El Camino and Julianne Miller of Rockland. Dahlberg, the six foot two senior middle blocker for the Eagles, had an outstanding performance in the Division Three section championship, coming up with the match's final two points. But overall, it was Dahlberg's consistent performance at the net that helped spark the Eagles to victory. As for Miller, the six foot one junior middle hitter was a key factor in Rockland's win over Vintage for the Division Two section championship. Not only did Miller deliver with a championship clinching point, but for the night, Miller had 11 kills, 10 blocks, and six digs. All right, Joe, another fun show. And remember, if you want to see this show, tune in to Comcast Sportsnet California every Tuesday. Show re-airs Wednesdays, Thursdays. And if you miss it, you can always see it online where? SACB.com. Every day we have news, notes, stories, show links, all kinds of fun because we understand and appreciate the value of great high school sports. That's right. All right, folks, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.